You're listening to the Decorate Podcast with Patrick Ali and Chad Poole. What's going on? Mallory from GSG is hanging out with us today. Hey, hey guys. how are you? I'm great. How are you guys? Good, good. We just had uh, we just had lunch nice. on the road. Where'd you guys go? Yeah. BJ's. To BJ's. Okay. And now I'm full and I want to take a nap. Oh, well, this is going to be an entertaining podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really glad to be here. Yeah. <laughs> I just well, thanks for all saving day. your best stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. No, but I'm, uh, I'm excited to have you on because obviously one of the big, uh, you know, big reasons that I had you on is you're, you know, part of one of our, I think, our, our best partnerships that we have. At GSG, so definitely the cool. best partnership. Oh, yeah. the best. Don't undersell it, buddy. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, let's kind of hop into it here because I'm I'm, I'm happy to have you on. But I want to talk before we really get into the episode a little bit more because we got a lot of stuff that we want to talk about. Uh, let's just kind of take a, a quick background on GSG, how the company started, and exactly what you do there, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, great. So <laughs> GSG, um, we were actually started as Texas Sign Supply back in 1950. Okay. And um, my grandfather was one of the three founding um, men that started the company. And then we had Texas Screen Supply um, and then uh, Neo as well. So mm -hmm. uh, three different companies. Um, and then when my dad kind of, he was president for a while, and then when he took over and um, – became the CEO, mm -hmm. um, he combined it into one company, Graphic Solutions, and that was in January of 2001. So nice. coming up on 20 years, uh, he's done a great job. We now have nine locations. Wow. wow. Um, I think when they, um, when he first started taking it over, I think there was three or four at that time. So yeah. definitely done a great job. 2001, there was three or four. 2001, yeah. We have um, added Austin, Baton Rouge, some... Um, and now we're up north, so Cincinnati, Minnesota, Milwaukee. Nice. So that's awesome. Growing, he's done a great job. I um, get to work with both my brothers and one sister-in-law. So is that a wait? Is that a good or a bad thing? I was gonna say, well, we're in I different states, know. so oh, wow. I mean, yeah. works. <laughs> no, that we're works. actually in different good segments. Good. You know, uh, yeah. all three of us are very different, and mm -hmm. we bring different aspects to the company. Yeah. So I think it's good um, with my two brothers, two older brothers. And then uh, my one sister in law is the credit manager. So, oh, nice. okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I might <laughs> she need does a, a great bit job. Money, uh. <laughs> so, that's Peyton's mom. We'll talk about Peyton's story in a little bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, so, both her parents work for GSG. Um, yeah. And it's kind of, it's yeah. actually really fun. Yeah. We so, you guys are very family oriented. We are very family oriented. Now, um, when, when you guys were growing up, did you, were you involved in the business? Was your dad working there, like, since you were a young kid forever okay. he's worked there uh i think since he was 19 or 20 okay um so he's always worked there he didn't really want us to work there he wanted us to go find something else um find our own thing jared and brandon though have worked there since they were 15 16 in the warehouse okay. mm -hmm. uh, my dad's a big uh person on work your way up that's what i was sure. gonna ask yeah so working straight from the warehouse and then kind of building yeah. your, building your your way through to the top of the company yes. and actually running it i think it's smart that's how you it's learn it. that's for yeah. sure for sure. So I was the only one who did not work at GSG out of college. So okay. I tried at 16. It lasted a day until he told me <laughs> I <should've laughs> when I showed up late, day two. I mean, 16 in the summertime, 9 right. a.m. Yeah. It's really early. Right. I'll give you that one. Yeah. So I actually uh, got my undergraduate in restaurant hotel management. So I did okay. catering, sales and marketing for a catering company oh, for cool. a while. And then um, came on board just part-time to help with a little bit. One project that mm -hmm. led into... I did outside screen sales, and then I um, ran the, our Tulsa office yeah. before I took on the role that I have now. And during that time, I also went and uh, got my master's in supply chain management. So oh, really? Okay. Yeah, from so did it come, did you, you know, as you obviously gradually started taking on more and more and more responsibility, at first was it just kind of a, you know, I need a job, you know, we have our family business, I know that I can get something right now to get me going. Or was it just, you know, randomly, hey, I did a good, I kicked ass at this, so now I'm doing more? <laughs> it was kind of like, uh, I thought I was going to be a great stay-at-home mom. Well, mm -hmm. day one, I called my dad, and I was like, I am not good at this. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is just not my calling. Yeah. Yeah. I love being a mom, but I, I need to work. And yeah. um, and I love working in my career. And he said, hey, I've got this one project with new customers. Just come on part-time, mm -hmm. see how it goes. Try it out, yeah. And it's funny, at the time, um, yeah, that's been 
almost eight years ago, we were redoing our website and uh, working with our, he's our VP now, Rodney, and um, I said, you know, we should have a hobby tab on our website because this heat transfer is going to keep going. And he goes, yeah. that's going to kick my ass if I put a hobby tab on our website. <laughs> he said, funny. I don't know if this is going to grow like it's going, you know, at heat transfer, we have organically grown it um, mm -hmm. because we've always been in the commercial sign industry. Right. So with that, you have a lot of the PSV, you know, car wraps, mm -hmm. all of the, that type of adhesive vinyl. So um, we just naturally had the heat transfer as well right. for screen printers, for jerseys, stuff like that. And it just kind of grew. And um, it just makes me laugh now looking back. I'm like, shouldn't we have had that? And he's like, oh my gosh. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You won that yeah, argument. I that's know. for sure. So I've always loved heat transfer. So that's kind of yeah. how I so beg to have this position. So then what is your, what is your role now? Uh, morph into? So I'm the vinyl decorating segment manager. So I'm over, um, you know, anything with the heat transfer. I do a lot with resellers. You know, I know a lot of people listening, probably crafters and stuff they mm -hmm. buy from a reseller. So mm -hmm. I help that with uh, them getting started and continuing to grow their business. And then um, any of the smaller format, like smaller format die sub and mm -hmm. anything really in that vinyl decorating yeah. okay. kind of segment for cool. our company. Yeah. Before, um, before we go further, I have to ask you because you, you okay. asked a question real quick and you jumped over. Where'd you graduate from? You were say. Uh, my undergraduate from Texas Tech University okay. and then Corpus Christi, I, correct? Uh, Lubbock. Lubbock. I'm sorry. What's Corpus Christi? A and M. Texas A&M uh, Corpus Christi, okay. actually. Yeah. But my master's is from Texas A&M College Station. Look at uh, that. Yeah, nice. I'm an Aggie. Awesome. Uh, nice. So yeah, we've had actually, I think our ninth and tenth person at GSG is going through. It's a uh, engineering program and supply chain management. Oh, that's really so cool. So GSG wow. sent two people through together every other year. So it's been very cool. That's pretty unique. exciting. Yeah, that's it's a cool. great program. Is it? Um, what What are the credentials to get into that type of program? Do you know, or is it just you kind of sign up uh, and? Uh, no, you have to apply. I mean, it's a master's in engineering from a Texas A&M is a huge engineering. Sure. School. It's a great yeah. program, and it's. Um, oh, I'm sorry. You're talking about the the actual program involved. I thought it was like uh, a program through like GSG. I'm like, that's. Crazy. Well, yeah. For GSG, you do have to apply. Uh, we have people apply, and um, y you know we want the people that have gone into it. I think seven out of eight have been you know, promoted and keep mm -hmm. going with the career. And you apply and see kind of you know we have different credentials of you know where you are, what you're doing. Do you have time for it? Because it's a sure. big commitment yeah. it's a two year program. Wow. Yep. It's a it definitely helps. I think it taught me a lot about just. Uh, supply chain in general just a lot um yeah. to get into the program itself you definitely it's not you know, a lot of programs it's a great program if you want to go right out of college but it actually helps having experience it's almost better for people that have had uh you know real life situations right yeah so. right no that's that's certainly helpful to piggyback off of and and it helps you learn and you understand what you're doing yeah, even further while sure. you're doing your education no it seems like more companies are do sorry no you're good you're good no it seems like more companies are doing that um as we get further and further is offering like tuition reimbursement mm -hmm. yeah different types of programs to further your career but it also helps the company and yeah it's just a, it's a really cool thing that uh that well, things happen it goes back to that the you know the original thought is that i'd rather take somebody fresh and train them my way and let them learn my way so that's a perfect way to do it so yeah. once they're done with the program can they choose a location to of gsg to go work like well a, a lot are already like with our company um so they're already in a role and they want to continue mm -hmm. to grow more. You know, it, it teaches you all aspects of uh, the supply chain and running a company, you know, yeah. from financials to like tracking your inventory and different mm -hmm. types. And mm -hmm. you have a big case study and you go overseas actually for a trip and oh, cool. really get to, I got to go to Singapore. It was pretty awesome. awesome. So, ah, um, pretty cool. And we had a great case study. It's, it's just like hands-on learning. It's really cool. Yeah, sure. that's really good. So, um, with your current role, you grew up in Texas, correct? Yes. And you're in Michigan now. Yeah. What brought you to Michigan? This guy to the right of me. That guy who's <laughs> off camera? I see him. Patrick and I see him. Yeah, We've yeah, met yeah. him. We had a very He's interesting conversation. He's my imaginary husband here. No. We had a very interesting conversation before you walked in. <laughs> yeah. uh, all good things. But, uh, but how do you like Michigan? And when? how long ago did you move up here? Well, uh, so it, it's been a year and a half. Okay. But I grew up in Texas, went to Lubbock, then lived in Houston, mm -hmm. went to Louisiana, um, and then moved to Oklahoma. Like I said, I ran that branch, yeah. and I actually met him uh, at a trade show in Chicago. Nice. <laughs> oh. And, uh, you know, it was just kind of weird timing, didn't know, whatever, and mm -hmm. we uh, did long distance, and 
they conned me into moving up here about a year and a half ago. <laughs> they kind of I had like a great that. first <laughs> winter. I actually, Michigan summers are yeah. unbelievable. I can't yeah. even explain it to anybody. It's a pretty hot one this year. Well, I mean, well, growing up in Texas, you, it's yeah, not really. It's I not thought it was pretty great. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's funny. Michigan, Michiganders are just as snobby as Texas people. It's just not as well known. I'll take okay. that. Like, I'll take that. Yeah. Everyone knows. Like, Texas, yeah. we're so proud. Yeah. Very Michigan proud. is just as bad. <laughs> I, you know, I was wa- I, I, I was watching a show the other day. I forget what it was, but it was a, um, it was a sitcom. It was a good show. But they said something like, someone was talking to somebody else, and they were in Texas, Lubbock, wherever. And someone said, in the name of Texas. And I'm like, you've, like, you guys to love Texas so <laughs> yeah. much to say, like, in the, in name, the name of, of te- Texas. Like, you would never hear, like, in the name of Michigan, down, I look down <laughs> at you, whatever. But, like, that, that, the passion is there for sure. Now, we're yeah. passionate about losing sports teams. Yes. Um, and we like our fall and our, our hunting and stuff like that. Mm. But, yeah, it, it, there's, got, there's certainly a different culture from yes. Texas to Michigan. <laughs> I've spent a lot of time down in Texas. I've got a couple of friends down there and um, taught a few classes and had a couple customers down there. So um, I love the area. And if I had to relocate, I'd probably go down there. But mm-hmm. what was the biggest culture difference between the two? And are you still adapting? Do you like it here? You know, do you want to go back home someday? Are you going to try to convince this guy to go back or what? <laughs> uh, I don't know that we'll ever go back to Texas. I don't know. Uh, you know, we'll be... We have a lot of kids, so once they're all (laughs) out of the house, I think um, we definitely go south. I don't know exactly where, but, yes, we love Texas. Uh, Definitely, there's some things that I'm adapting to, like take your shoes off here as soon as you go into someone's house, and you do that in the south. My huge on that. And it's it's like, well, just make yourself at home, weirdo. (laughs) Like, why are you just taking your shoes off? So that's a little weird. Even my parents came to visit not long ago, and my dad's like, God, I forget that every time. Oh, yeah, funny. It's I do just too. a little weird. It's it's so much that there's people that have so, like signs at their house <sighs> like please take your shoes off to remind people. I uh, like that. See, I, I don't really it doesn't bother me that much. Yeah. Um my wife is a big proponent of oh. take your shoes off. Mm. And I'm like this guy. <laughs> I'm in a I'm in a rush or whatever and yeah. I walk in literally just to walk in to grab like keys. I forgot keys, right? <laughs> and she hears the do, 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 every do, time. Take your shoes oh. It's five feet. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> well, I want to get back into into Texas too, because uh, GSC, you host a golf outing every year, and yes. right now is right around that golf outing time. It but is. unfortunately, with COVID and stuff, we yes. can't have it. But kind of explain uh, the reason behind the the golf classic, and then also, you know, I want to obviously put all of that. Make sure we put all that in the description of how to donate and stuff too. Okay. And and how Patrick and I can be on the team next year. Yeah. yeah well, Tell Brett and Dave y'all are out. Well, listen, Brent we heard about your golf game last year. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, yeah. like Brett got a cool a cool polo this year. Yeah. Everyone that um, unfortunately we had to cancel due mm-hmm. to COVID um, mm-hmm. because it's a great event. We do um, for everyone that signs up. We do an event the night before. We have um, usually a local country artist come in and oh, play awesome. some songs. We all just hang out, have a good time, and then the next day do the tournament. So. Everyone that came last year, we wanted them to know, like, we're still doing it next year. We appreciate yeah. it. Um, and just sent a polo to everybody that played last year. That's nice. That's awesome. So and just explain what the golf outing is and the, the obviously the purpose behind the golf outing. So my grandfather was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, and it is, I want to say the number two killer in America, actually, is pancreatic cancer. Yeah. Um uh, under heart disease, I believe. I could be wrong. No, don't quote me on that. But um, it's not talked about because... I think it's like only 5% survive past the first year. So yeah. uh, you know, there's a lot of survivors and um, and a lot of other cancers that are able to get out there and talk about their story. And and um, it's awesome. They can raise money and awareness. And pancreatic cancer is it's scary. It comes on really quick. You know, we found out uh, about my grandfather, and within a year he'd passed away. So mm-hmm. um, PanCan is a local in Texas that does pancreatic cancer research. So okay. we donate it to pancreatic cancer, to oh. PanCan. Yeah. Um, so this year would have been our 21st. Last year was our 20th, I believe, uh-huh. if I'm getting this right. So uh, we Nobody like to make it a – I wrong. know, I'm going to get it wrong. Yeah. And there are everybody's <laughs> like, you don't even know. You don't even know. Yeah. But it's such a fun event. Um, I love it. I got to play for the first time in it last year because Lucas calling you out, he quit and didn't want to keep playing. Mm. So oh, I got Lucas. to jump in on the back and nice. play. So I was pretty excited. I grew up playing golf. Um, nice. Otherwise, I ride around with my mom, and we I joke that we're like the mayors. We get to go say hi to everybody nice. and talk to everyone. It's um, 
Make it's sure they're, they're not cheating. Oh, they cheat for uh, sure. I would call golfing. out the person Listen, we, I think did. We golf with Brett a few times. Uh, <laughs> you can buy mulligans. We, <laughs> we'll make money for Pan yeah, any way we can. You gotta buy them. Don't, don't well, but you would lose some money because that dude is uh, whatever. But it's a great, <laughs> it's awesome. Pan That's Can cool. is a great so organization. Yeah. Um, it's been affected by uh, so many people throughout our industry. Yeah. Um, even, unfortunately, one of our great sales guys, his mom passed away from it. So it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's uh, it's crazy how often it's out there. And we just really like to well, it's cool that you're, highlight everything. That you give so much. I mean, obviously, like we talked about, you know, before we did this podcast, unfortunately, Peyton's not feeling too well. So we're not bringing her on here, but we'll reschedule that but i mean even the the peyton strong like the peyton pink you know just having something there uh to to draw not only attention to it because i think that's super important but also to help you know who helped you so that's that's really cool that you guys are doing that and donating to it yeah and we'll talk when we talk about be the match that's one of the things is yeah if you can't donate we get it sign up though like let's help yeah. yeah. Save somebody's life. A hundred percent. Well, let's actually get into that too. I mean, one of the, one of the big uh, reasons that we wanted to obviously do the podcast was we, you know, Brett, um, had let me know about Peyton's story, you know, probably a few weeks ago, right before we talked. And as soon as he told me about it and then I, I learned about the easy weed color and I'm, listen, I'm new. Okay. I don't know everything. <laughs> I learned about the easy uh, I weed color. You, Joe, right? but no, <laughs> uh, I learned about the easy weed color and I realized that Joe did the shirt. I was like, we got to, I want to put that on. We had, we had it on Beatrice exactly. before, but this is Frank. Um, uh, this is now Frank, and he's all tatted up. But I wanted to keep this up here because I think it's super important. So I want to kind of talk about, uh, obviously, Peyton's story, um, which we can get into more, you know, on a later episode when we have her on. But just kind of talk a little bit about, you know, the basis of, you know, obviously Peyton's story and then be the match and how we can, you know, obviously help. So, um even though GSG is a family company, my dad has always taught us business is business. You know, mm-hmm. yes, it's personal. Yes, we are very close. We have an amazing team at GSG. But uh, when we are sitting around at our family ranch, we're not sitting there talking about GSG. Right. You know, like family time <laughs> yeah. is family time. Yeah. And um, and he's been, uh, I wouldn't say cautious, but not one that just goes out and talks about our family all the time or that, right. you know, that we all work there or anything. He's pretty tough on all of us so right. it, that's just not his style so when Peyton got sick it uh, was really hard on our family mm-hmm. we we're very blessed we have a great family and that just hit hard even though you know my mom's gone through a hard time heart wise none of that is like a child getting sick and right. it just is heartbreaking yeah. so yeah. Uh, when we first started talking about doing this Peyton pink uh, an easy weed color custom easy weed color I didn't really know how he's going to react you know because it's highlighting it and and so I said, well, what does Peyton think? And Peyton's like, you know, anything that could save a life like I mine, you know, she's like, yeah. I love it. I'll do, you know, whatever. And yeah, you know, it was a hard age, just 12 when she found out. Yeah. Um, Couldn't imagine. You know, so it was, it was tough. And I mean, highlighting it this way. And last year we had sold t-shirts that a hundred percent of the proceeds went to um, be the match. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had people like Lon Winters, he's a graphic designer and, consultant uh, with graphic elephants in um, the screen world designed the shirts for us you know we had uh, a t-shirt company donated uh, the shirts and you know everybody m r was involved mm-hmm. Caesar involved tremendously through it all and so everybody just put together just to donate for it and it was yeah. awesome raised a lot of money and a lot of awareness besides the um like i said the financial part so be the matches um you just log in. They'll send you a kit. You can donate to them if you want. Otherwise, it's free of charge. They'll send it to you. Mm-hmm. Swap your mail, send it back, and you're on the registry. So, oh, cool. And um, this is to, if if I'm correct, it's for stem cell mm-hmm. matching? Mm-hmm. Okay. So Peyton had aplastic anemia. Okay. Um, and when we do it with Peyton and then her mom, Stephanie, we'll <coughs> kind of get into her story. So yeah. aplastic anemia, the um, only way after doing a couple of things to save her life was a stem cell transplant. Mm-hmm. And her donor actually was out of Europe. So Oh, so Wow. Kind of sweet. So be the match reaches yeah. that many people, huh? Yeah, that's incredible. That's awesome. So I mean, it's it's awesome. But um, and like I said, you just sign up and then. Is it be the match dot org? You mm-hmm. know, okay. okay. Be the match dot org. We'll make sure we put. It. I want to make sure that we put everything on the on the link too in yep. the description. No, uh, we'll. Um, I, I will do that. We'll do it live. How about that? I would do that. We'll do it live. Do you want to for real? Yeah. Register live. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm good with that for no, sure. We're gonna. S- I'm gonna yeah. swab your mouth. And swab you're gonna, okay. Wait a I'm minute. Just okay. Listen. Right you now, I'd say. COVID, I don't know if you're going to get <laughs> yeah, right. swap face masks. We actually uh, do. And actually, that's a 
really good point for people that are watching. They're probably like, yeah, th- where's the masks and everything? Yeah. Just everybody knows at home, we get we check each other every day. So. Right. Well, and um, we're, we're mildly and socially distant in room anyways. It looks a lot bigger. We had a mask on walking in here. Right. It looks yes, a lot we, bigger we, uh, on we camera. Do, uh, we do test, like it, or not to, but we do temperature checks. We go through all the, mm-hmm. the, the proper channels we need to. So that's why. Right. No masks, but actually, thank you for bringing that up because I never <laughs> thought about that. Um, but with you know, and and something that I obviously I want kind of your take on it. You know, when everybody finds out that obviously there's this if there's a situation going on with Peyton, I mean, what's like the first, you know, not to get too far into it. So if there's stuff you don't want to talk about, that's fine. But what's the first reaction from everybody? Obviously, you're upset, you're sad, you're pissed, right? But that's kind of your time now to be a family, you know? Oh, I definitely think it brought us all together more as a family. We have a, a family ranch that we all say is our happy place. And yeah. uh, just to go out there, watch the sunset out there, mm-hmm. hang out together, you know, it kind of just brought us all, well, life's not, it's too short. You yeah. Know? Let's slow down every now and then. Um, I mean, of course, my dad is successful. He's a fixer, right? So right. he's like, yeah. all right, yeah. how do I fix this? Like, what what's the solution? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. He right. will give me a hard time for saying this. He used to always say ROR, reasons or results. Like, I like don't that. tell me the problem. <laughs> tell me how you're gonna fix it. So, yeah. that's how it. That was the hardest part. Is you know you have, uh, it, there isn't an answer immediately, and mm-hmm. nothing's very fast, and it's lots of tests and stuff like that. Yeah. So, very scary. And um, my sister-in-law and brother did an amazing job. You know they have three other kiddos at home, mm-hmm. so uh, the, the way they balanced it, she's say, super mom anyway. Like that's yeah. gotta be super. Works from home, four kids, and her house is always clean. I'm like. Hi, you really showing me up. Can you like throw something <laughs> yeah. on the ground before I walk in? Nice. Start going yeah. in there and tearing yeah. stuff. I know. I'm like, she wears her shoes in there. Yeah. She wears her shoes yeah. in. It's still cleaner than my house. <laughs> Stops all over. And her laundry's done. Like, what's happening? Well, <laughs> I, I got. I'm just gonna say this, and I'm not trying to get anybody in the room sitting next to you in trouble, but I understand that there's <laughs> random, you know, crates and packages that show up at the house. Is what I was told. And you guys are running out of room for all of these random uh, machines and stuff. So. That UBS driver and FedEx driver are horrible. They go to the wrong house. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> you almost have to have a sign out. It, it's like, mine. It's uh, my baggage. They've actually gotten so comfortable with us. Yeah. We're on first name basis, and they just yeah. go right to the garage. Like, That's just awesome. inside the garage. They know where they're going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did, did they give you a birthday card for me? Oh my no. god! Yeah. I was gonna say that's flowers, flowers. <laughs> just flowers. That's awesome. Just. This episode of the Decorate Podcast is brought to you by Caesar North America. Caesar is the world leader in heat transfer and pressure sensitive vinyl, and I gotta say, guys, that Caesar products are simply unmatched. If you want to find out more about Caesar North America, simply go into your browser and type in www.caesarna.com or download the mobile app. They got a mobile app, dude. Download the mobile app, hit the drop-down menu, hit find a distributor so you can find out where you can find Caesar products today. Stephanie and uh, Peyton are hanging out with us here. How's it going? Good. We're good. Good, good. I see Mallory down there, too. We got to do these things remote, so it's always, like, awkward of, like, what screen do I pay attention to? Yep. I know. <laughs> uh, and you got to remember, no matter what, like your face is always on there. So. Right. It's the triangle of wisdom. You're just kind of. The triangle <laughs> of wisdom. I like that. So, um, like I said uh, before, when we just were prepping really quick for this, is that, um, you know, one of the big reasons why we brought GSG on in general is just because, you know, I love GSG. I've gotten to work with them at shows and stuff like that. So it's been fun to build that relationship especially being so new in this industry for me, everybody's been so uh, welcoming. But uh, a lot of the reason why too is because Peyton, I wanted to talk about your story a little bit more. And, um, you know, not only did I want to talk about your story, but I want to talk about, you know, now how you're dealing with just everyday life, but you got kind of a, a big thing right now. You're dealing with school, right? Yes. <laughs> how's, how's that going? Are you doing virtual or are you going <laughs> into school? I'm doing virtual, so it's not too, too hard. But. Okay. All right. How's that different from uh, from being in, in school right now? Uh, I haven't been to school since, like, elementary. So. Okay. <laughs> so you're used to it then, right? Yeah, so. <laughs> then that good. works. We, oh, good. We need to give a lesson to all the other kids out here. My kids are both, uh, both of them are in school, but the schools mm-hmm. might be switching to virtual here in the next couple of weeks. So it's like, I don't know, like, how I even deal with. I'm not a teacher by, by any means. I'm not, I'm not a teacher, so it's going to be tough. But I think the biggest difference for Michigan kids that go to school is, uh, well, virtual school, I should say now, is no more snow days. So 
Oh, yeah. SOL there. Yeah, yeah, they're always at home with you. Yeah. yeah. They just don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. But, but uh, Peyton, just to kind of get us started here, I want to know, uh, for, obviously from your perspective and your mom's perspective here, just kind of take us from start to finish. I want to know about your story. Um, you know, obviously we, we've kind of prefaced, you know, your story a little bit, but just take us kind of from start to finish of, of you. So I was 12. 12. Mm-hmm. You just turned 12. <laughs> I like Bane's commentary in the background. <laughs> That's all right. You just turned 12. That's okay. Yeah, I just turned 12 and then... I just had this weird like rash all, all over my body and mm-hmm. we didn't do anything about it for like two months. But yeah. <laughs> it's t- it's not like great parenting, right? <laughs> well, I mean it's typical. Parenting. It wasn't really a rash though. It was like these spots. They were they they're were, under the skin. It's when oh, your really? blood can't like like the work properly, so it's trying to show you that it can't. Mm-hmm. So that happened for like two months and then she could come home from school and say these spots are moving and i'm like what so she'd go home, go to school and they'd be on her hands and she'd come home and they'd be on her legs and i was like that's strange yeah and that's was, that's not an allergy it's like a little magic trick <laughs> yeah <laughs> your own personal magic trick. well as a parent too it's like one of those things even even waiting a little bit is he always you always do like the weak tester right it's always like two right. or three days you're like this we'll just see Mm-hmm. Over the course of the next couple of days, we'll monitor it. That's that's always my approach to everything. Well, Amanda's I mean, like, we gotta go get <laughs> me too. It. Like, uh, so my daughter had a rash the other day. We were, I was taking her to swim lessons, and I'm like, you know, if the, the maternal instincts kick in. You're like, oh, I'm freaking out, and my wife's like, ah, oh, it's just allergies or whatever, and yeah. and then it it goes away. But in your case, it was obviously something more serious, um, and the fact that it was moving and stuff like that 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 had to be a little alarming. So, yeah, and then. He came home from school on um, a Monday and had told us, or I'm sorry, like the week before. Oh, she was going to walk down a hallway without oh, really? getting winded. And then she would go upstairs, her bedroom's upstairs, and she would be really winded going upstairs. And I was like, that's strange. Yeah. Like, almost like she had ran like five miles. Wow. But um, she had literally walked 20 steps. Right. And so we didn't think anything of it. <clears throat> and then um, we had a birthday party for her brothers. And that weekend... My mother-in-law was there, and Mark Granberry's wife was, mm-hmm. um, was there, and she's a nurse practitioner, and she saw her arms, and she's like, "Yeah, I don't, I, we need to call the doctor. I think it's some sort of vi- you know, virus, or yeah, it might be something more." So um, that was we called on February fifth. We took her in the afternoon to the doctor after school, and um, had her blood drawn. They do a blood a, bl- a blood panel, and mm-hmm. um, we had to wait. The next like day, months? she got home from school, and the doctor called her pediatrician and said, um, uh, "Miss Granberry, how close are you to Texas Children's?" And I said, "Well, I live in you know where I live," and I said, "Probably about an hour." And he's like, "Well, we need you to pack your bags, pack Peyton's bags, expect to stay overnight. She needs to go to Texas Children's now." And I was like, "Okay," and yeah. I'm a pretty calm person for the most part. And I was like, "Okay, can you tell me what you think it is? Because I'm a very I want to know. I don't want to be sugarcoated." Yeah. He goes, well, it's one of three things. It's either a virus, it's cancer, leukemia, or it's a blood disease. And he's like, I really don't know what it is. I, if I had to guess, I would think it was leukemia because of her you know, symptoms, but mm-hmm. they can be other diseases also. So um, he called the emergency room, got Peyton a room in the emergency room at Texas Children's. My husband just happened to be home. I'm not even sure why. Um, <laughs> He sounds bad. Yeah. Yeah, I don't <laughs> um, so he he and Peyton went downtown and Payne, her brother, mm-hmm. um, and then her other two, she had two, her twin brothers were two at the time, had just turned two. And um, so I stayed here with them while they got settled down there. Um, this is pre-COVID, so everyone was welcome anywhere. True, so, yeah. And then... Um, he, we we were waiting for them to get there, get settled, and we all went down. And it was about eight o'clock at night. And actually, I remember the only person I remember texting that night was Mallory. Um, I don't remember because no. Well, my mother-in-law knew we were there only because I believe Peyton FaceTimed her. And uh, said, a little bit of a worrier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's a worrier. God love her. But she, 
um, Peyton said, or Peyton or Peyton one contacted my mother, FaceTime my mother-in-law before Peyton and my husband Brandon left and told her that Peyton's really sick. She's in the hospital. And I was like, don't tell yeah. her that. <laughs> yeah. The, no, it's not, it's not so much about telling. It's the delivery. It's the, the, yeah. That's the, hey, she's in the hospital. <laughs> oh, cool. So now everybody can freak out really right, cool. Yeah, right. before we even know anything. <laughs> So it was a little, it was, so she knew we were trying to keep it, we're pretty fr- private people, but we were trying, we didn't want to tell anybody until we knew exactly what we were dealing with. Yeah. Just have to a text 8,000 people. So um, Peyton was in a room with her three brothers. You can imagine it was just completely mayhem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's not quiet. But um, the doctor came in and said, um, can I speak to you parents together? We're going to have a child life specialist coming in hang out with your children. I'm like, sayonara, have fun. Yeah. And, um, Can you them, like, a we went into a room and when I went in that room, I walked, we walked, we were, my husband and I were walking down that hall and I was like, this is what happens in the movie, the show ER. Yeah. I'm saying my age now, but <laughs> like you, you picture going down the hall to this conference, this, you know, consulting room. And, um, we sat down and it was a wonderful, um, female doctor and she goes, do you know what we're dealing with? And we were both like, no, we think we were told it could be leukemia. And she goes, well, all signs are pointing to leukemia. So oh, wow. we were like, okay, what does that mean? And um, she's like, you are very calm. And my husband is very calm, but mm-hmm. um, anyway, but I was like, um, well, the doc, my, her pediatrician already told us, we already have been a little bit forewarned. So we knew, and she's like, okay. So she explained to us that she's gonna have to be admitted and what we were dealing with is the reason Peyton had the spots on her arms and legs and her overall body. She um, she had no platelets in her blood. So platelets are like the brick to a house. They protect the interior. The interior. So okay. when you don't have platelets, your blood comes up to the skin. Oh. And at this point, her platelets were at zero. We didn't oh, wow. So she had no platelets. Her blood was at zero. She literally, I mean, she was extremely pale. Yeah. She's always very fair skinned child anyway, but more so, but we didn't even, you know, there were a lot of things that we didn't catch on to. Yeah. Um, and, and not to, not to stop you though, just to clarify, what is like a normal platelet count? A normal platelet 6, count? 6,000 to 10,000. Mm-hmm. Really? Wow. Okay. And then normal blood is anything over seven. Seven yeah. point, anything, the average is about seven. Zero, twelve. Yeah, hers wow. was. Wow. So she had no blood, no platelets. Um, which explained a lot because in the summertime of two th- summer of 2017, we took her to the emergency room a lot for stomach aches that we couldn't figure out what was going on. And they think that was the start of it. Okay. Um, so fast forward to, we spent the night in the hospital that night. A bone marrow pile. A bone marrow. So that, that night she got two bags of, bl- two bags of blood, oh, a yeah. bag of, um, a bag of platelets, maybe two bags of platelets. So, yeah, they do um, them. It was a, it was like Disneyland. Texas Children's is the best hospital for child care. It's it's you they tr- I mean they came by with carts of goodies and Peyton was so excited to miss school and um, <laughs> and being a place that they I mean they were she was spoiled rotten. She got to see the therapy dogs come by, so she was very um, very well taken care of. We yeah. really didn't we're dealing with and being twelve, we had to talk to her about what it could be. Sure. Yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to actually get Peyton's take on that. When when you kind of first heard about all this stuff going on, I mean, at such a young age, did you really understand what was happening? Uh, it didn't hit me till like December of last year. What had really happened? Really? Like, yeah, because I it was very like surreal mm-hmm. and like just kind of felt like, and I genuinely thought it was a virus. Like I didn't think anything of it. Sure. Because you're so young and naive, you don't think like, you don't think the worst of things or right. the reality of things. Yeah. So I thought it's just a virus. I'll get over it, whatever. Mm-hmm. Then she never cried, never made, she never really questioned anything. The first well, night she trouble You just said hospital. she was at the Disneyland hospital. So what I mean, what are you going to do? <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> she <laughs> the first night at like 3 a.m. Because this was like at 1 a.m. We got admitted and at 3 a.m. we left the room she was connected to a pole mm-hmm. <clears throat> but we walked out of the room to go get ice or something they have a snack bar with any snacks you can mm-hmm. think of and so we went down there to get her something to eat and the nurse was like i thought y'all left you can't leave your room without telling us and we were like oh gosh here we go we've already started trouble in the hospital <laughs> <laughs> and Peyton's such a roll flower she was like oh no 
I know. And I was like, it's okay. It's yeah. Okay. <laughs> so in, in when did it, when did it finally kind of kick in for you? Um, you know, that obviously this was going on. When did it really, cause I imagine the news of the news initially is kind of, uh, it, I don't want to say it goes over your head, but at the first time you're, you know, you think everything's normal, right? You think everything is fine. When did it finally sink in for you as a parent to know that, okay, there's something serious going on? Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> um, it was whenever she went, so that morning, the following morning, she went back for a bone marrow biopsy. It was just me at the hospital because mm. her dad was at home with all the boys. And I was in this waiting room and I'm living, I'm like thinking in my, the back of my head, like this is, this is not like, how, how are we going to do this? We live an hour from this hospital. We both yeah. have full-time jobs. Right. We don't have family that lives here. We, I mean, I, clearly people do it every day. Yeah. That was what was going through my head. And then the reality hit whenever I was in this waiting room, waiting for her to get her bone marrow biopsy or hip bone biopsy. Um, I saw this mom over in this corner just crying. And I was like, that's, that's me. Like that's yeah. what reality we're living in. And like, all these people in this waiting room were all waiting for these children to come out of these procedures to tell them if there's, you know, something was serious, something was mild. Um, so it really didn't hit me. I don't think it hit me then that it was serious. And then I was a utterly mess in yeah. the waiting room yeah. myself. Kind of like this aha like moment that it was real. But um, she came out and then after that we had to wait. That was the hard part. The hardest part of her whole entire illness was we did a lot of waiting, didn't we? Oh yeah. yeah. Especially of... for later when we were seeing if I could get a bone marrow by transplant. Transplant. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, cause I got a thing called ATG first, and that didn't work. Um, it's where they administer a drug, but it's only temporary. Okay. It's only temporary fix. A long term fix is a bone marrow transplant but we wanted to see if that worked and it didn't and so they gave me an urgent lots of waiting though lots of they, they told us that this whole because they possibly get oh so that fast forward to when you were diagnosed we just got ahead all right i'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay we could fast forward i get it so she was so she had the bone marrow biopsy and they released us to go home <coughs> and we went home um, I'll never forget when we left the hospital, it was dark in Texas Children's. You're in the middle of Houston's medical center. So there's like 17 hospitals and it is like a maze of mousetrap. I had no idea where I was going. Oh, really? Now I could walk it blindly. Could you? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I almost hit this nurse leaving. And uh -huh. I'll never forget. I was like, oh my gosh, that could be the nurse that saved my life. Like what? Yeah. All right. <laughs> together. But it was such this like out of body experience. I wasn't, nothing around me was like really moving other than what we were going through. It was very, it was a very big pause in life. And we left on a Thursday and she was told she couldn't go back to school at least until, like, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we thought that was a great thing. So she was told she couldn't go back to school and then she had to come back on Tuesday because they did blood work after the bone hip bone biopsy. They did extra blood work. And then when we go back to the um, on the um, hematologist, hematology oncology, to tell us what what diagnosis she had. So the, oh, so they did. Sorry, after the hip bone biopsy, they said all factors are pointing away from leukemia. She does not have these leukemia cells, and we're like, oh my gosh, this is the best news. Yeah. Glimpse of hope, yeah. Um, and then we thought we were told it was either a virus, like a blood virus, like from this illness, or a disease called aplastic anemia which we had never heard of. Right. Um, so we got released to go home and on Tuesday, they would tell us for sure they needed time for those back, those things to grow and do more research. And we went home and spent time with family. And yeah. um, who's and the, who's the first person? Uh, I know you said that you, you texted or called Mallory first, but who's the first person that you talked to, you know, really like had a deep conversation about this with other than obviously I know probably your husband, but um, like within the family. Cause the cool thing is about GSG that I love is that 
everybody's family there. You know what I mean? Even we even found out the other day that uh, you know the voiceover for the video. I mean, has been there forever, so he's basically family at this point. You know what I mean? Steve Anderson. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Steve Anderson. So he's basically family at this point. But who's the first person that you you contacted about it? I really, um, I'm trying to think. It was such a blur. We had so many. I know Mallory talked to me a lot. She was reaching out. They sent all kinds of goodies. Mm -hmm. um, there was more text. Was it your sister? I was it thinking was, it was Suzanne or somebody. My sister came down. My sister's a teacher, and she oh, was that's in, in Austin, and she actually left her convention to come help with the boys because they're boys. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. A little crazy. So we knew we knew we were, even though I told her not to come, not to come. Um, my family all lives in Dallas as well. And um, so we were kind of at a standstill. But I know I talked to Mallory the night that it happened. I remember texting her walking outside the hospital ER telling Mallory, it's not good. That's all I could tell her. Yeah. And that's what the nurse had told us. So from there, um, we texted with all of, I mean, all of Brandon's siblings, my siblings, um, mm -hmm. all of my in-law, you know, the in-laws um, for me. Um, I was the main communicator. No surprise. Yeah. Okay. Shocking. <laughs> Brandon would send like a meme or a, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's his like, way to communicate. Yeah. 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 Oh, she's okay. Yeah, yeah. she's great. That's my yeah. face. <laughs> um, but it was, it was, we're not, oh, Brandon and I aren't overly dramatic people. So we didn't want to read into it and we were, we didn't want to say more. It was just kind of weird because we had to open, kind of open up our lives to people and tell sure. them every detail so that they could know and know how to pray for our family and get engaged. Yeah. And yeah. Then um, I believe Brandon was in communication more with people from GSG mm -hmm. than I was um, in the beginning. And then yeah. um, it was communicated throughout GSG, I believe, by our HR team and um, things like that. But I don't really, I don't really recall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's got to be tough too. Um, you know, knowing that not only is your child going through something, um, but you're going through something as a parent and having to communicate this constantly and probably texts all the time of how's it going and this and that. And I'm sure you have your ups and down, you know, up and down days and you kind of just want to throw the phone against the wall and say, I'll get back to you later or whatever. Yeah. You know, I could imagine that that would be very difficult, too. Yeah, it was definitely it was kind of odd because we didn't start a Facebook group. Um we were, you know, looking back, you always have, oh, I wish I would have done that differently, but we were very private about it. Not, a, I mean, people knew about it, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, but um, Facebook, I would update, but I wouldn't update every little thing that she went through. Right. Um, all of our family knew, all of our close friends knew, but mm -hmm. it was just kind of weird to let the outside world in. Right. But um, having the support of people was, you know, I, know, I remember my mother-in-law telling me that, um, because I'm very, I don't like to take anyone's help at all, and I never have. And this was a true test to that because I had to, I had to depend on people. And um, she was like, "Let people gift to you. Yeah, that's their gift to you is that yeah. they can help." So um, that was a really big blessing. People, you know, just checking on us and um, sending messages or verses to help Peyton and contacting Peyton or sending yeah. little gift or notes in the mail. We still get notes in the mail from this one lady that. He'll send us these sweet notes like every six months, and awesome. uh, just that overall support that you never, you never want to walk these waters, but when you do, you have no idea the support that you get, and that you know that makes yeah. it so humble. The positivity behind that, for sure. Yeah. So I want to fast forward just a little bit into you know what the next steps were. You know, obviously you're going through this right now. You're in and out of hospitals, trying to figure everything out. What's the next steps? It's obviously to find a donor, correct? So she had, so she was diagnosed with aplastic anemia mm -hmm. and, and the standard, if you do not, so all of, all of our family members, all of our, her three brothers and my husband and I all got tested to see if we were a match for her. Mm -hmm. So they want a 10 out of 10 match. They want a 10 out of 10 match. They, that's the closest they want if they yeah. can get it. Um, so Payne did the test, Crawford and Callan, her little brothers, her dad, Brandon and I all did this blood test to see what percent of match we were to her. None of us were her match. You uh -huh. only have a 20, a, a, a parent is a five out of 10 match always. Yeah. But um, it wasn't enough to make it where it would have been a, bene would have been a beneficial donor. Um, her brothers had a 25% chance of being a match. Um, and we found out, I believe it was about three days later, we did a, she was in a case study. And so in the case study, it, it was encouraged that she'd be in a case study because 
my husband and I both agreed and Peyton, we, we consulted Peyton on every decision we made that if we could help somebody else through this journey and help find more cures or different avenues for um, treatment, we wanted to do that. So she agreed to do, join this case study and in the case study, they, if you, you, it's like a lottery, they choose, they put your name in and you either got chosen for a bone marrow transplant or you got chosen for um, ATG, which is horse protein, mm -hmm. what they put in the body to kind of kill off your body's current, um, current blood and then reset it. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, in the case, study, so in, if, if one of her brothers had been a match, they would have done a bone marrow transplant immediately. Mm -hmm. Because none of them were a match, we, and we were in the case study, we agreed to do that, do the case study. So she was chosen for ATG, which is the horse protein. Yeah. It was a seven day process, um, really no side effects at all from her. Um, and she was in ICU for one 24 hours. Then she went down to like the second level, second level below mm -hmm. ICU, then down to a regular room, really just getting IV yeah. if you, to see if they could reset her body to say, okay, start working and start producing these good cells rather than these bad cells, killing yeah. off these teeth. Sure. So then um, after that, we were told it would be six months. We had to wait six months to see if she would be um, responsive to the ATG. And um, normally after ATG, your body slowly starts increasing its own blood, creating its own blood, creating its own platelets. Yeah. Her um, body actually went backward. It, she required more blood, more platelets. Um, was very, very sick in and out of the hospital, had fevers. We got after three months. They, two months. Two months. They decided that a bone marrow transplant was. In May. So in March, she was diagnosed in February. March, we did the ATG. And in May, we had a meeting with her doctors and team. And we just said, we don't see any changes. Is it supposed to be? I mean, it's been almost 60 days. Is this normal? And they're like, no. You know, we're seeing the same things you are. We, we need to start her for a bone marrow transplant. So yeah. they started with, um, they researched the, the bone marrow registry. And in February, um, whenever, in February, whenever she was first diagnosed, they automatically run the bone marrow registry to see if there's any matches, 100% matches. And at that time, there was one match. Or no, okay. I'm sorry, three. Okay. But because she was in this case study and the standard form of care, is ATG. She couldn't even get that. So she failed ATG essentially. So <clears throat> they re ran the registry but end of May and um, she had six donors, six matches, perfect wow. matches. There's six random strangers in this world that match her DNA more than her father and I and her brother. That's crazy. <laughs> so he, um, the Texas Children's in works with Be The Match. That's their um, number one donor program. And um, she, they um, reach out to Be The Match and the next step would be that the donors do an extra, a next step of testing. They do mm -hmm. they're in the registry through the mouth swab. And the next step is that they get notified that they have a match and that they need to do this, this next step. Of that next step, only one of the six showed up for testing. Uh. And, we were like, whoa, this, I mean, it's like, depending on one person that yeah. you don't even know, that may not even live in our country. Yeah. Um, was quite scary to know that, you know, we, we had really high hopes in humanity that this person would come through and give. Mm -hmm. So then um, the next step for that person after they did the first round or second round of testing is they, they, fl they fly them to the Texas Children's for the text testing. And all we knew was that the donor was not from the United States. We had no idea where he, we knew it was a guy. Men are better donors than women. Um, they tend to have, because women have children and hormones, it kind of, I guess, doesn't make the, mm -hmm. the um, we have We have to be good for something here, you know? I feel like, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> like just, for, just for one thing, I'll take one. <laughs> yeah. When, so, when you're, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Real quick though, um, for, the be the match program do you know and we talked to mallory a little bit about this on our last episode but do you know if um the gentleman that found out that was your your match one of your matches um do they get a background on 
Peyton and everything that, that she's going through, or it's just, hey, we've got a match. Are you willing to donate? Do you guys know that information? Oh. No. I just learned something. <laughs> I was curious. It's, it's, it's interesting to me. They, they don't obviously know her name. They know that she's a girl age 12 where she lives, obviously. Okay. So just kind of like just some generic information. Generic okay. information, yeah. But for some reason, they protect the donor more than they do the recipient. Um, because they can, they, yeah, that's right. You're all right. They did know a lot about her, but we didn't know anything. We were prying and prying and right. no problem asking a lot of questions. And I was like, okay, keep uh, we call her Oprah, by the way, <laughs> Just so you know, her nickname is Oprah. Like when I first started dating Jason, Peyton was actually in the hospital. So they were the first ones to meet him mm -hmm. in our family. And I was like, well, you get to start out with Peyton, who's the best, but then you get Oprah. <laughs> anything, if you were hiding anything from me, it's coming out. That's yeah. awesome. So I asked the doctors, like, are you sure you can't tell us? Like, can I bribe you? Can I bring you some chips and salsa? Sure. Some, like, yeah. <laughs> food, something. Some Caesar, heat material, press material. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but they um, were like, no, we have to protect the donor. Um, and we, we didn't really know where his location was until a year and at a year and then they it's weird they give you like at a year they give you like the general area so they said he's from europe mm -hmm. and then at two years they give you the like exact con like not country. country yeah so he country so europe has different rules than the united states does so if the donor had been from the united states they could have contacted Peyton within a, at the year marker before. Okay. Uh, it's all up to the donor. But in the UK, where this, you know, our, our this wonderful person is from, um, it's two years. They require two years of no communication whatsoever Got from it. the to the recipient. And gotcha. then after that, we can reach out to the donor and say, "Hey, you saved this girl's life. He's now eat, you know breathing because of you and healthy because of you. Can you meet you?" I want to come to eat. That's awesome. Movie. Yeah, and I, I was I was curious about that too because I've seen stories obviously of, of folks that have had, you know, heart transplants or maybe they've had eye transplant or whatever. They they mm -hmm. have the opportunity at some point in time, you know, it's an opportunity to meet the person or the person's family that was able to to help them. So I was really curious to know that if you if you had any contact or or knew the person now or if that's something like in the future that you may want to pursue is to know obviously who this person is, but obviously I can tell, you know, that's something that seems like it interests you. Definitely. So. Um, you said I can send them a letter, but I decided not to because I couldn't figure out like what to say because I was like, what do you say? Like, thanks? Yeah. Like, sure. <laughs> yeah, thanks. It's kind of a big, a big shoe to fill. Yeah, so I'd just rather meet life yeah yeah that's good but and that's okay but you know the 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 cool thing is regardless of if you ever get the chance to meet that person or that person gets a chance to meet you there's there's always going to be some type of bond you know that you have with that person and and it's like one of those things that you can you know look across the room at somebody if you you know you do something funny behind your parents back you look across the room at your brother you're like we know what we got away with you know what i mean we know what we got to do right <laughs> So it's it's a cool it's a cool thing that you get to carry with you always. You know, it's an unfortunate circumstance of why, but you know, between you and that person, they know that they helped somebody and that you know that, you know, somebody came through for you in in a way that unfortunately other people weren't able to do, you know, for other reasons. Definitely. As her aunt though, I did volunteer to go to Europe with her anytime. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we can come too. We can do a podcast. Yeah, we well, can do a live yeah. Uh, podcast. Yeah, can I get an invite podcast. here? Yeah, you can see Caesar Italy while we're over in that part of the world. Yeah, I, we and then we can send it up. to the actual Oprah, and we can get some major exposure. No. There you go. <laughs> so, um, take us on to so okay. So you've you've had the opportunity. You've gotten uh, you know the bone marrow transplant done. Um, you know, basically now, what is life like for you? I know that uh, Mallory said they obviously weren't feeling too good the other day. When we record it so i imagine that there's still some you know things that come up here and there but you know overall how do you feel um it's i usually feel pretty good yeah just always tired but i've always been like that so. yeah yeah well if you if you uh if you hear from mallory that on the podcast right before we started i was like hey we just got done eating lunch and i'm getting kind of tired so 
I'm, I'm here with you. <laughs> I'm here with well, you. Stephanie, Stephanie doesn't know how to nap. Peyton and I, we can nap. There you we go. <laughs> I'm not a we, nap breather. We've got but, this down. They would but, always give me she got blood mm-hmm. or any type of blood product. She was she had reactions to blood products. Mm-hmm. Um, they had never had a patient have every reaction, and she had every every reaction the first night. Really? Uh, Benadryl before she got blood or platelets, and um, it was would knock I... her out. It was fifty milligrams of Benadryl yeah. every time. So you were you were causing problems in the hospital then, huh? <laughs> very, um, but she loves to sleep. So she, the way so there's a thing called graft versus host is what your body. Um, it's a natural reaction to having mm-hmm. a bone in your implants, mm-hmm. and the inside of your body is different than the outside. So I have a male's DNA. So if you take my blood, you can tell gender by blood. So my blood is a male's hmm. blood. Mm. And so, she, has two, she has two different. Yeah, yeah. female and male. Hmm. So it normally presents itself in the skin or any like opening like your nose, your mouth, like anything like that because it's a gateway for infections. And so your skin normally reacts because the DNA in your skin is different than in your blood. Oh, wow. The way mine reacted was my stomach. And so that's why I don't feel good most of the time. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Is- Her stomach hurts. I have gastroparesis, which is basically, I have to be on a really like strict- Strict diet. I have to take something every time before I eat, like 30 Mm -hmm. minutes before. Because if I don't, I will throw yeah. it up. You just get sick. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So, so everybody presents it differently. But. Yeah. So after you were, um, after you got the, the marrow transplant, um, when was that? You said, was that last year or the year before? Two years ago. Two years In ago. August. So was there a long recovery time from that before you felt to where you're at now? Or was it? pretty immediate to where you're feeling pretty good really wasn't too too long like a month she was in the hospital for a month and she was pretty sick in the hospital because of so um chemo was chemo was pretty bad she had five days of chemo four days of chemo i'm sorry and then one day of full body radiation and the full body radiation is really what did a number on her yeah, internally yeah. um most of the time when like when somebody has cancer their radiation is focused on like a certain area or certain tumor because they were trying to eradicate eradicate everything in All her body yeah like, zero they it it was full body it was kind of a weird pretty weird experience she had to sit still on this big tube and, or on this table minutes. for 30 minutes but um the that can cause a lot of problems post transplant like right after the transplant so in the hospital she had something called the bk virus which is oh. the bladder kidney virus Mm. Um, where her bladders, bladder and kidney were very, very angry at her. So that was the only thing in the hospital that was um, a, bad. a bad, very bad. She was on a lot of pain medicine for it and slept quite a bit, but she didn't need any blood. She hasn't got any blood or any platelets since August 15th of 2018. That That's is great. amazing. Well, and, That's and awesome. what's super important is is be the match. Um, we talked about it. Chad and I, want we were going to do some research and how we, you know, can at least – register to be donors too because i think this is a super important cause like i said early on as soon as i heard about it i just thought it was like you know as somebody that has um you know an immune deficiency disease myself it it spoke to me you know what i mean so uh and that's something i don't really ever talk about but um i just think it's it's really important so we're going to figure out how we get registered um and whatever we have to do to to obviously join uh this this cause because i think it's really cool yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. A lot of people think it's like so really invasive, which it's really not. Like the donor, if you're picked, it's one in 400 chance in your lifetime to be picked as a donor. Yeah. So it's pretty slim that you're going to get picked. But if you do the donut to be a, become a registrant on the bone marrow registry, all it is is a swab of your mouth. And yeah. they, all they fit. So then if, it was, if somebody was picked as a donor, it's literally a blood draw. They sit there. It depends. Peyton received a stem cell transplant. So. Mm. Bone marrow transplant, they actually go into your hip bone like they did for her bone hip, hip bone biopsy and pull the bone marrow directly. But Which it doesn't sound right. that doesn't sound fun at all, by the way. <laughs> I heard it's painful. You're, the way you're explaining it now, mm-hmm. it doesn't sound as fun. <laughs> the look on your face. <laughs> <laughs> I 
actually too bad. I literally described it was a corkscrew going mm -hmm. in my hip, so that That's sounded terrifying. really painful. But it was only about like an hour recovery. Like it only hurt for about 20, 30 minutes, and then it just feels like you have like a little scratch on your hip. And oh, so really? It's not well, you're a tough kid. That might hurt me a little bit more than. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Chad was running away from bees the other day when we were outside. Yeah, so. I don't like bees. Don't like let's, just, I, let's just clarify. Peyton also falls a lot. Let's be honest. She's had to <laughs> recover from a lot of bruises in her life. Well, and she's she been through a lot for sure. Her dad. You know, so. No. Um, did did we hit on Peyton Pink quite a bit with Mallory, or do we want to talk about that? Yeah, more? I'd like to. Yeah, I'd like to get in just a little bit more. I know we got some, but just for the sake of making sure we can plug everything in, um, we'll just kind of come from right here. I'll, hold on, that's my cut to make sure I've edited it. Uh, talk about, uh, you know, GSG and the Peyton Pink. Uh, you know, obviously there's custom easy weed color that Caesar and GSG have collabed on, but talk about that a little bit. You want me to talk? You? Sure, you can talk. You want me to say? Or Mallory, to anyone, yeah, anyone's fine. So like, like Stephanie said, and I said in the first part of the podcast, our family is um, pretty private. So this was, um, when this idea first came about, that, you know, it wasn't just like, hey, Steph, Peyton, is this okay? It was also Mark, Brandon, like, it's a lot of people on this, uh, it's getting the story out there. And, you know, every, honestly, Steph and Brandon said it's up to Peyton. Let's see what um, what Peyton says about it. And Peyton, her response actually was, if we can get Be The Match out there more, I would love it. Because if good. we could save somebody else's life. And, you know, with um, partnering with Caesar and like I said, a lot of other people, the proceeds from Peyton Pink are going to be the match. But even if you can't buy, um, you know, Peyton Pink or you can't donate to be the match, like Steph said, uh, signing up to be a donor is, to be on the registry is unbelievably easy. I mean, you sign up online, they mail it to you, you swab your mouth and then send it right back in. So it's, you know, there's lots of ways to help without having to financially do it. So yeah. that's awesome. Um, so the Peyton Pink color, um, Peyton is very crafty and into anything artsy and anything to make a mess and drive Stephanie crazy. Um, <laughs> she's always creative and doing lots of stuff. So uh, we just thought this color was a fun way to kind of bring it back around and help again, spread the word about Be The Match and, yeah. and using Peyton's story to do it, but really just trying to make sure people know um, about Be The Match. It, Stephanie, I did not do like the Facebook page, didn't do GoFundMe, anything. All she told anybody is just, if you want to do anything to help our family, donate to be the match, become yeah. a registrant, like just do anything like that. So well, that's really that's cool. kind of with this color, what we really wanted to just kind of uh, bring awareness. Cause I knew nothing about be the match until everything was Peyton. So yeah, I didn't either. And, and until we, until we, and to clar yeah. clarify, just to clarify, Chad and I just got our own landing page on a website. You've had a pretty cool landing page for a while now, so. That's yeah, <laughs> you're, you're definitely a leg ahead of us there. Yeah. Well, uh, real, real quick before we wrap up, though, um, I know we want to talk about how you're doing now, and it sounds like you're doing pretty well. Um, do you guys have a lot of, like, follow-up appointments you need to go to? How's life been yeah. since this crazy pandemic? Are you, do you guys got to be super careful? Like, is that... They're actually wanting to move my appointments to once a year. Oh, really? Oh, wow. He was going every three days a week and it's an hour drive back and forth. One thing she was adamant about when she was in the hospital after her transplant, the 30 they the average most patients are 30, 45 days in the hospital after a transplant. And then you have follow-up appointments every other day. So every three days a week until they release you, then you go two days a week, then you go to one day a week, then you go to once uh, every other week. It's a process and it's been a long process of appointments, but she was adamant that she did not want to stay in an apartment by the hospital yeah. after the transplant. And so <laughs> it's really all based on miles that you live from the hospital. Mm -hmm. and the max that they will let you live is 60 miles. And I think we live like 57 miles. Oh, wow. so you made the cut. Like, if, we don't, if we don't live, you know, 50, if we don't live 57 miles, we're going to somehow backtrack our address and make us live close. Sure, <laughs> sure. She wanted to be home and she was doing so well. They Good. did approve her exam. So in the beginning, she was going three days a week to the appointments. The appointments were very tedious all day, literally from if she had an appointment that started at 830, we wouldn't get home until four or five. Um, um, then she went to two day a week, then one day a week. Then right, for the last year, she's been going once a, once a month. Once a Mainly month. Mainly just to get lobotomy. 
Yeah, so now she has too much blood in her body. Oh. <laughs> oh. So she has the opposite problem. So her blood now, because she's had so many transfusions, mm-hmm. uh-huh. um, there's, there's a lot so of iron. iron. There's too much iron in her blood. Okay. And so it's a, it can damage her liver. And so those numbers are really high. So they're trying to eliminate the blood from damaging her liver. So she goes in and gets, she sees her transplanting, and then she actually gets blood taken out, which is such a turn of events because yeah. we much blood put in. Talk about full circle. Yeah, that's so crazy. <laughs> the big part of why we realized how important blood donation is yep. on top of being a bone marrow registrant, um, donating blood is and platelets is really, really an easy thing for people to do, but it's definitely necessary in cancer and oncology, hematology, oncology patients. Um, so now she goes to the doctor um, once a month just for a simple, how you doing? Here Check your up. number. Yep. And, um, her liver just wants to act up, but other than her liver, she, and then so then she'll get to go to what they call maintenance, right? Mm-hmm. They call it the one year appointments. They call them yeah. like or one. And they do it the day before on my rebirth day. Mm-hmm. It's the day I got my transplant, so the I do it the day before that. So, so you got two day. birthdays now. That's pretty cool too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, do you get gifts Robert. on both birthdays though? Well, do you, what? do you get do you get presents on both birthdays? Well, yeah. I mean, if you're a kid, and you have two birthdays. That's a silver lining right there. You get two. You get two cool birthdays. She always said she wanted a summer birthday because her birthday's in January. Oh, yep. Well, I really didn't expect to us for us to go by it this way, but <laughs> we'll take it for right. Well, I, that's actually a good question. Now, see, now you've you've opened up more questions for me. When is <laughs> so? When's your birthday in January? It is January 26th. Okay, so you're a little bit further away from Christmas. I have a, a my daughter's is the 14th of December. And like, oh, I'm wow. always struggling between because they're so close to Christmas time. Like, do we go big on the birthday? Or do we go big on Christmas time? <laughs> you know, she, no, no, she's mine's the day after. Yeah, mine's the oh, day really? after. And uh, my uh, son, Jake, Jason's, uh, Jake and Ashley, Jake's is Christmas Day and Ashley's is the 23rd. So when oh, I met Jake, wow. Christmas, December is going to be horrible for you. Yeah, them. it's a slippery slope. So stuff. it's it's actually <laughs> karma that Stephanie has to celebrate two birthdays because I was when I was growing up, you just being had the, the baby and the only girl. Combined, we celebrated my half birthday. Oh um, yeah. So I celebrated my half birthday every year with my friends, and Stephanie's like, "Who? I would never do that for our kids." Yeah, <laughs> I, would, I never even thought about that to be honest with you. But what parents gonna let their kids come over the day after Christmas? To well, no, I so. yeah, uh, certainly understandable, and you know it's kind of hard to justify. Well, it's <laughs> it's Christmas morning, and the yeah. next day's your birthday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's been it's definitely been a struggle uh, the last the last three years, but we're figuring it out, I guess. Yeah. So, but, but hey, just don't I, wrap her presents in anything Christmas. Well, That's what I do is I, I start in January, I just start taking toys away and hiding them, and then rewrapping them. <laughs> That is Stephanie 101. <laughs> I just hide them to give them away, though. I don't yeah. give them back. Yeah, she gives them away. Yep, so, yep. Like, I show up, and I come home, and all these stuff <laughs> packed in my kid's suitcase. I'm like, oh, this is Aunt Nini said I can take it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, um, so to... That she got through her journey, which is a big, a big part of um, cancer patients and on- hematology mm-hmm. oncology patients is when you're a kid, they treat you like royalty. So... They're called beads of courage. And so anytime she was poked, had a procedure or anything, she got a bead. Wow. And so she has a lot of beads. And actually, we stopped getting them because we want, she said she wanted them to go to smaller kids. Because yeah. They, and she already knows what they're, what the symbolism is of them. But yeah. um, this is a story about GSG. So she has all these beads of courage. And they're, they're really kind of hard to store because they're just beads. Mm-hmm. So uh, um, Janet Johnson that works at GSG, her husband made Peyton this really cool storage container out of oh. wood. From- oh, that's awesome. That's all wood. All wood's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And this was a gift to Peyton from a fellow employee of GSG's husband that makes these because their child had cancer as well. And they'd experienced oh, cool. courage. And um, so they make these. It's he and I think two or three other woodworkers make these jars for the beads of courage in children's hospitals. So that's awesome. Um, that was a really cool gift that Peyton got um, from a, FGSG person That's that awesome. he keeps up in her room is like a memento of you know what she's been through she can look at the beads and yeah uh, the, yeah and just story. like I mean just like the you know just like the having that story already it's just something that you can take on 
with you forever, you know, and it's, it's something tangible now that, that kind of makes it kind of ties everything in together. I feel like, so that's cool. So really quick. Um, I know that we, I just want to make sure I get it in here too. I know that we, we got it when Mallory was in here. Um, how do we donate to be the match or join the registry? If you want just the easiest way to go about it, if you go to yeah. PeytonPeak.com, okay, perfect. it has links to everything. So awesome. where you can um, obviously see the easy weed, but links to donate right there to be the match. Um, and then also a link to their website if you want to go and register. So, perfect. or it's be the match.org, but okay. PeytonPeak.com has Peyton's story and um, I, I think a little video that Peyton made for yeah. this year um, after her rebirth day and <laughs> and then, like I said, all She's the other like, info. She's like, don't watch it. <laughs> that video took so many tries. I, I mean, it was like... We started at 8 o'clock at night and finished at 11. It was so yeah. funny, but I kept trying the video. And she's like dying laughing or she'd say, mumble on her words. So at one point, it could be funny. We weren't going to submit this, but Peyton was talking, like moving her mouth. And I was talking, saying... <laughs> I was like, this is what you're supposed to say. But well, as as two personalities yeah. on, on social media, and Mallory understands this too, being on social media, sometimes, Peyton, it takes a lot of takes to make all this happen. <laughs> so Yeah, it, it took us about two I, hours I for about that, a 10-minute ad read the yeah. other day because uh, yeah. we just couldn't get through it. It's hard. My first video I did for DSG, I think it took like eight hours at home Yeah. <laughs> for a minute and a half video. And now I'm like, let's go. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> now you're like, let's just get no it over No one with. cares. <laughs> Yeah, that's, I got it down now. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, hey, I really appreciate, again, uh, Stephanie and Peyton, for you both coming on and hanging out with us and allowing us to share your story. Um, and, and Mallory, I really appreciate you coming in studio the other day to do the first half and then, you know, do the second half via Zoom. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys very much again for coming on. Um, anything else you guys want to talk about while we have the or platform? Plug, or, or plug. Got everything out of there? Hi, Payne. Payne's still in the back there. <laughs> hey, buddy. We see Thanks, you, too. Thanks, Payne, for joining it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, well no. uh, again, PeytonPink.com, uh, correct? Yes. Okay, yes. awesome. Yeah. And that's where you can see the uh, – you, you can purchase or see the uh, the, the Peyton Pink. Um, Caesar and GSG had teamed up to uh, create that custom color. Uh, you can also uh, find all of the links to be the match to see where you can register. Um, and to be a donor and or donate uh, to be the match. It's a super, super important story. So please, please go on and at least uh, see the story, donate, register. It's very, very simple and it, it could def definitely potentially change somebody's life forever. Um, you got anything else, man? Uh, no, again, just wanna say thank you for guys for coming on. Yeah. Um, very, uh, very happy you were able to share uh, your story with us yeah. and our, our platform and anything we can do to help. Um, continued prayer sent your way that, that everything continues to go well for you guys and mm -hmm. um, great story of generosity from family and, and people alike as well. So um, kudos to all involved and uh, thank you guys very much. Thank you all so much. It's been, a, yeah. been fun to walk down memory lane and be on <laughs> this side of the, of the of the recovery rather than in the middle of it or yeah. the beginning. Well, this is something I gotta, I, I have to uh, have it made, but Peyton, I'm gonna give you something from our studio is you're gonna get the first official The Decorate podcast key, which means that you can come in here anytime and interrupt us and be a part of our stuff, okay? <laughs> Thank you just so mess much. with his stuff first. Though. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's always my that stuff. That just means you're coming to Michigan, so that makes me happy. That's it. <laughs> All righty. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.